Welcome to the Tip In Maple Leafs Podcast, episode 210. Coming up on this one, what's new is old again. The Leafs lose game one of the 2024 Stanley Cup playoffs to the Bruins by a score of 5-1. to one. No offense from the top guys in fucking perfect playoff form. Can't get a save. Awesome. All this and more coming up on the Tip In Podcast, episode 210. It's only one game, but not an impressive start for the Leafs. Let's hit the intro. Matthews, a shot! Scores! Austin Matthews has hit 69! It never sounded so sweet! Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Tip In Maple Leafs podcast. I'm Chad. I'm Dale. Okay, so it's the playoffs, and we all we all come into the playoffs. We all get our hopes up, Dale. We all say to ourselves, you know what? This is going to be different. And I know that a lot of people are going to say this team doesn't – like they've only won two game ones, this core. Like they don't really show up for game ones a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. But did it not just feel the same as it does every year? Oh, God. Well, of course it felt. It, yeah, of course, man. Like, it, did it, anything it, feel different in this game? Did anything no. tell you, oh, this seems a little different this year? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Like, we can talk about Nylander not playing. Would that have made a difference? Absolutely not. Absolutely. Maybe they would have got an extra goal, but whoop do fucking do highly unlikely the way that cat's been mailing it in the last fucking two weeks of the season anyway. So look, man, and just a nice little icing on the cake, like hockey night in Canada in the third period, they just, they decided just, well, fuck, we're going to turn on the Leafs too. They just start trolling the Leafs, <laughs> throwing the commercials late in the third period with the Aerosmith tune, same old story, same old song and dance. Don't know if you caught that one. I know. Like, if we didn't got, have copyright on our YouTube, we probably would have uh, opened the show with that song. Like they're slow montage like of the Leafs like the faces of the players on the Leafs bench and they're just going to break with like the, that Aerosmith classic same old story same old song and dance but that is hey man everyone fucking knows it everyone everybody knows it it's not a fucking big mystery here okay no, like, the hit the track record speaks for itself so the Leafs have now lost I know game one whatever not to go back to the regular season but let's be serious here they haven't beat these guys the last eight fucking times they've played them going back to two seasons ago. Can't beat these fucking guys. Can't even get a sniff no. out of these motherfuckers. This whole year, the regular season and including tonight, they haven't even had a lead on the Boston Bruins. Oh, I didn't even know that. They haven't even had a lead. They haven't even had a lead on this team. It's pretty wild, man. Look, Boston, to me, to me, like Boston played good, not like incredible if the Leafs would have fucking put the big boy pants on they could have been in this fucking game and let me just say this off the top here i thought the first five minutes of this hockey game they looked really sharp they came out they were flying they were banging they were finishing their checks all that and then a couple pinches and what do you know first shot on fucking net right through fucking samson what did we say last podcast we were talking about the goaltending and we said either he's going to make a big save or he's going to let in a goal, no, and it's going to set the tone for the game. He looked like the same guy, Chad, that played the last... In the two. first three minutes, Swayman made an incredible pad save oh, yeah. down low. Oh, yeah. And sure, then the, it goes down the other way. It's in the net, one nothing, Boston. He's an elite goaltender. The Bruins have two elite goaltenders, and we have two fucking question marks. Like, Samson, I'm... Okay, if, if this is what we're in store for here, this series is over. Well, do you start Samson's next game? What do you do? Would I personally? No. If if it was my decision, I would not. Will Sheldon like? But I I still don't know what I'm going to get out of Joseph Wall. But I'd rather at least give it a fucking go. 
maybe you go to Samsonoff one more time. And if it's not, if he doesn't find it there, you're out. Like maybe you play the Florida script from last year where like, hey, the first two games, not the best. Goaltending, not the best. They put in big Bobrovsky and then away they go. Maybe that's what we're looking at here. Samson off game two, maybe. And it's like, this is it, Sammy. Like, this is it for you, bud. Like, you do something here tonight or that's it. We're going to wall for sure. Might be too late at this at that point if they're down to nothing because this team, it, the least, aren't the Florida Panthers. I'm not sure they can beat Boston four out of five games if they drop the next one. But uh, look, like it is only one game, but just all the old, you know, that's not even the saying. What did you say? Like, what's what's old what's new is old again that's not even the what's saying. old is new again that's the saying but like i wanted to flip it like what's new is old again because that's what we're looking at here yeah what's new is old again it's so it's so weird like boston is not the same team from 2019 or 2018 like this is not the same boston team but they They're play not the, the same but they play the same way it's like you put on the black and gold and all of a sudden you're a better player than you were anywhere else that you played and in in reverse, you come to Toronto, you put on the blue and white. Yeah. And when the playoffs start, you just don't know how to play. There's only and, five. There's only five guys on the lease that were. That there's only five guys currently on the lease roster that were in those two series against the Bruins. I don't have to tell you who they are. You already know who the fuck they are. Yeah, everybody knows. But uh, other than that, it's just like a new batch of dudes. But like you were just saying doesn't really seem to matter does it doesn't really no. seem to matter well i mean we've been saying this we've been doing this podcast since 2018 and we've been saying it the whole time like it's you can you can put pieces around the core of this team but it's the core of this team and where were they tonight like matthews had a few chances marner okay. i thought was invisible Tavares <laughs> was invisible few Elander chances was hurt few chances great few chances That's wow it. Yeah, that's not 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 good enough, man. No, so like, not yeah. the way this team's built. This team isn't built to rely on your third and fourth line. This team is heavily, heavily reliant on the core group. Top guys, no offense. The only goal the Leafs got in this game came from the fourth line early in the third period when it was already 4 nothing. It's already fucking over, and you get a fourth line goal. A fourth line goal, great. Some contributions down the lineup. Great. David Camp buries one in the first minute of the third period. But yeah, top guys, top guys out. Just no, like you can, you cannot win. And you know this, and I know you know this. You cannot win if Matthews and Marner and Tavares, I know Nylander didn't play, Riley, if these guys don't decide to play a different way. Okay, so they didn't have the offense going tonight. So do you want to maybe try something else to try to beat these guys? Like you're not going to, okay, it's not, the puck's not going in for you, but do you want to maybe try to do, get in the fucking, try to throw the, get get in Swayman's face. Uh, is that his name, Swayman? It yeah. is, right? Yeah. Go, go to I, the front I, of the net, bug the fucking, like create the tone for fucking next game. But it's still just like, well, we're trying to score, trying to score. It, like there's other ways that you can fucking win. There are. For, and, and there were other ways that they could have won this game. There are other ways that they could have played. Boston plays such a tight defensive game. They, it, it, it's kind of, they basically give you the dirty areas. Like they take away all the time and space up around the blue line. And, you know, Marner loves to dangle back along the blue line. They take that away. And they're like, if you want to score on us, you got to go to the net. You got to go to the dirty areas. None of these guys just, like that. They don't want to do it. Like, no. I know in the regular season, you can score 69 goals playing that way, but you're not going to get any goals playing if, that way in the playoffs. If you are afraid to go to the dirty areas and try to bring another element to your game, Mitch, Austin, JT, whatever, Riley, if you are afraid or not willing to do that, yeah. it, it's over before it even started. Because you look at Florida, you look at Colorado, you look at these teams who have either won or gone on runs, and like one thing in common throughout all of those other teams, they've got guys that are willing to fucking do that. Yeah. 
and their, their top guys, sorry, excuse me, their top guys are willing to do that. Our top guys are like, how the fuck do they not know by now? If we want to win, if we they know, well, then why won't, then, then what is it? What, why won't they do it? Why? I have, I have no it? idea why they won't do it. I like, have do no you, idea. Do you, like, do you want to fucking win or are you just content with like being the best team? And they're not even the best team in the regular season, but a good regular season team. And just like when it gets, when the going gets, what's the, I just George W. Bush. When that, the going when we, gets tough, the tough gets going. Right. And get, that is like a perfect analogy for the fucking lease. That's exactly right about the Toronto Maple Leafs. When the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Only opposite for these guys. Well, because they don't have the tough to get going. Well, why not? Like they 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 can't or they won't. Well, here here's here's what I think, and maybe I'm wrong because no, I, do I, I doubt I doubt you are. What do I know? But no. Here's here's the thing. You said it. You said it off the top. They started the game and things were kind of, things were looking good. Oh, I'm they like, were, yeah, it looked dude, right for opening face off. Domi and Mar Domi's yes. like, guess what, Marchant? It ain't happening. Not this time. Not this time. Before the puck even fucking dropped. Right. But here's a little thing that happened, and this is a constant theme, and it, it it's outside of the big boys on this team. Is that I feel like Boston made a change a few minutes in and they were kind of like, all right, Toronto's trying to play uh, Toronto's trying to play Boston hockey. They're trying to, you know, play dirty, lay hits, get you into penalty trouble. We're going to play Toronto hockey and Keith didn't do anything. And for the fucking umpteenth time in the playoffs, Keith is getting out coached by the other coach. Name one time when, when he hasn't like, even Dude, even make a change, do Chad, something like even if you watch, go back, watch that first period. The Leafs weren't even looking at the puck, they were just looking at bodies. There were some passes where the guy, like a clear pass to a Leaf player, and instead of accepting the pass, he's focused on laying a hit or doing something, which is great. Okay, you got to play physical in the playoffs, but like it's it's almost like Keith had it in their fucking head. Name, name one playoff series. Name one. And I know they beat Tampa last year in the first round, but guess what? They didn't. He he did not outcoach Cooper in that series. No, Cooper Vasco, outcoached him. Vasco, Vasco, outcoached him in the bubble. Montreal Vasco, outcoached him in that series. Like, he always gets outcoached. And I feel like tonight Boston made a – like, they just made a change somewhere in. In the first few minutes, the coach was like, all right, we got to do things a little differently. And that was I, it. I, I can't think of one playoff series that Sheldon has coached where he's out coached the other team. Like go even like I know they beat Tampa. They did they won the series great last last year in the first round. They didn't deserve to win it. Tampa Tampa outplayed them. But I would also follow that up with like the prior year when they played Tampa, I thought they outplayed Tampa, but they lost. So it's not like I'm not it's not even about that. Ooh. I but you I, I know you're talking just about being out coached. Yeah, Sheldon Keith, he just can't seem to be like he just seems like he's not in the upper echelon of like the top tier co guys behind the bench. Oh. Like I just don't see it. Yeah, I feel like when it comes to the playoff time, he's not he's like unwilling to make the changes that you have to make on the fly. You know, like Boston started starting their second power play unit because their first power play unit wasn't going, and it led to two power play goals in this game. I don't see Keith doing shit like that. But you, okay, but Chad, okay, what is he? I, I mean, I'm not going to be a huge Sheldon De Keith defender here because, like, if this goes south, fast, I'm not saying that he should start the second power play unit. But what I'm no. saying is, make changes on the fly while you're watching the game. But he just kept rolling the lines up. Domi takes a stupid penalty. And then he plays them like the next shift. And it's like, okay, you're already losing the fucking game. Domi looks like he's kind of off the rails right now. Like, I yeah. love that he's trying to get under the skin of the Bruins, but do something as a coach. Like, make a change. Switch something up. I I, I, under, I I think he's looking at that, like, and I kind of agree with this to an extent. Like, if they are going to do anything here, Domi and Bertuzzi are going to be a major part of it. Yeah, a major, major part of it because the other fucking Muppets, the top Muppets on uh, this team, it looks like we're just going to get the same shit. I know it's only one game, but it looks like we're going to get. But did like, Bertuzzi and Domi look like they had anything going tonight? 
No, but at least they were engaged. Like they were throwing hits. Like they were, it, it looked like their effort level was a little more than some of the other fucking okay. dudes. Then do a sneaky move and throw Austin on the third line when you're down to nothing. I, I hear all of a sudden you. Sneak, I, I hear you. Sneak, sit Holmberg and put Matthews that were with Robertson for the, for a couple shifts. I don't I know. Hear you. Like do something. No, I hear you. Like man. try to be a little bit of a coach during the game instead of just fucking. It's almost like they're getting beat. And he's automatically starting to look at game two and not I, worrying about what's going on. It drives me fucking I, nuts. I hear you. And hopefully it'll be a long series and, and they can rebound here and we'll see what be. happens. But but let's be honest. Let's be honest. There are three losses away in any fashion. I don't care what happens, whether they get whether they get swept, whether they lose in five, six, or seven, it doesn't matter. A loss to the Bruins in any fashion, and it's over for Sheldon Keith. It is absolutely over. Um, you know, like I where think was, he's where was this Bruins team at the end of the season? Maybe they were just <laughs> what, what's the word for it? Maybe they're the the old conspiracy theory. Well, that wasn't the word I was there was something else. I can't it's I can't think of what the what it is I'm trying to say, but uh I think they anyway. were just I think they were just um look like when the Bruins get in the playoffs, it's different. When the Leafs get in it's not different. It's like it's it's the it same. Is, like, no, it is different, but it's it's different in a bad way. Well, no, I like, mean it, from from prior playoffs, it's not different. Like, you no, know, I know it's it's you, not different. But Boston, you, puts you know, it into playoff mode, and Toronto's playoff mode is like they go into a shell. Boston has a playoff mode. You know what you're getting from like they're yeah. not going to cheat you on effort. They're just not going to do it. That's not who they are. That's not who they've ever been. They're not. That's not what they're about, man. Like they, they understand the moment they're like, okay, now it's time to fucking go. Like, here we go. The Leafs don't seem to grasp like, oh, we need to like, look how they're playing. Like, yeah, maybe we should do that. <laughs> like, I don't well, fucking know. I don't, I don't even think, I don't even think you should copy the Bruins. It's like you, you play the whole regular season and you're built as this team that's built around this core that scores goals and is offensive. That's why you don't give a shit about your goaltending and you're fucking nonchalant about your defense is because we have this fucking firepower offense. And then you get to the playoffs and you try to play a different style. Like all of a sudden you try to play like a gritty, we're going to be in your face kind of style. Like that's not who you are. But, Let but I'm open Bertuzzi to that. Do I'm, that. I'm, I'm, no, I'm open to that, man. I want to see the other guys fucking play that way because guess what? Okay, they can play that way, but still Chad, score some fucking goals. No, I know. Well, that's a whole, that's a whole other thing. Like the go, we'll get, we'll get back to the goaltending in a like, second. Like, don't but, concentrate so hard on being a hard ass. No, no, that you no. Fucking forget that you have no. to score to but win. If, if it's not going your way and you've got goose eggs across the board from everybody, then me, that's where you like. Okay, the first two periods, goose eggs, Mitch, Austin. JT, nothing. Then maybe you go into the third being like, it is for nothing. Maybe we need to like right. show show a different element of your game. Yeah, like, we may lose, but we're gonna show you that we're still around. Like, just I just wish they were just a little bit fucking not even a little bit, a yeah. lot tougher to play against. It's too easy. It's just too oh, fucking that was easy. An, like that was an easy playoff win for the Boston Bruins. If this was the Panthers tonight, it would have been eight nothing. And let's be serious. Let's be serious. How many posts? Boston hit what five posts? Oh my god! So so the puck's going behind. I'll we'll get back to the Samson, offense. But... I don't know if Samsonov saw a shot. Tonight. I'm going to skip to the like we'll it get either back to the hit, it either it either hit him Look. accidentally or <laughs> it went off a poster in the net. This game could have been ten to one. It could have been ten to one. You like imagine ha if those if if half of those shots don't hit the post legitimately, it's well, seven. Ten, it's if you're seven gonna go that way, one. then it could have been ten to three because Matthews hit a post and Ben okay. Wall hit. Okay, well, post. great, that makes it much better. But well, uh, I'm just saying. But no, but he, okay. But I feel like the posts that the Leafs hit were like. No. Oh, it wasn't the goalie not seeing it. Where Samsonov, it's like he had no, he didn't even recognize the puck was fucking going past him. And it's off the crossbar, off the post, off the crossbar, off the post. Not, he's not seeing the puck. He's not seeing it. No. Like clearly, how goals going right fucking through him. I Contin know. Continuation first, of his last two regular season games that he played tonight was a fucking the no whole different. Team. The whole no team. Different. 
the whole team was a continuation of how they ended the season. But like the first goal, I was like, okay, yeah, it's the first shot that went in, but it was well, that's two- terrible in a playoff it's game. Terrible, that's but it was a two on one, and I didn't really blame him for it. The second goal, third goal, I'm like, holy fuck, you got to make these saves. But like the first goal, but the first goal is a killer too, man. Like it's a how, killer. And how, but and you how got many the times fourth, he- you got the fourth line out on the ice, and then your defenseman fucking pinch. Yeah. Why the fuck are you pinching when you have when you have the fourth line out in the ice? Yeah, like the no. fourth line is supposed to get a deep cycle, have a good shift, get a whistle in the in the offensive end, and then move on. And your defenseman pinches and give up gives up a two on one. What are you doing? Just stupid mistakes like that cost you the fucking game. It is wild. The first Sorry, shot... I, I apologize to the listeners because I'm in a bad mood tonight. No, well, I'm sure a lot of the people that are going to be watching this or listening or fe- like feel the same. And like, how could you just, not? Like, it's just it, it never changes. It never changes. Everybody wants to see something different from this group, and we don't. We just see the fucking yeah. same shit all the time when it counts. It's just it's beyond disappointing. It's beyond frustrating. It's just like, what the fuck? What? Why can't you guys? do what is necessary to win like to me it's like you they just they don't want to it's not that they can't they don't fucking want to like you don't want to do what like kachuk or mckinnon or fucking whoever like (sighs) you i don't know that's that's a perfect way to sum it up there is a level that you need to get to and to get to that level, you have to sacrifice your body. You have to sacrifice like everything, man. Everything. You have to two put everything months, on the two, line. Two and months of a fucking don't war. Don't want to do it. A battle every other night for two months if you want to fucking lift the cup. That's what yeah. it is. Like, yeah, it's hard. It truly is. Like, well, they they said it at the start of the broadcast, and I like I read a book. I read Wayne Gretzky had a book years ago, and I read it, and he talked about the three seasons. He's like, there's the regular season, there's the playoffs, and then there's the final. And he he basically broke down like, like how much it amps up in the playoffs. And then if like you say, if you do manage to win three rounds and get to the final, he's like, it amps up even more. Of course. And of these course. guys can't even amp it up for one for game one. I know. I know. It's it's so disappointing, man. It is it is so frustrating that like the just their makeup and their DNA. And I'm I'm talking more of the core, like because that's what it's, we're it's used all to the losing. core. It's it, all it, the it, core. Right. So I don't know. Like it's game one. Do they rebound in game two? And yes. and and you know, we'll see what happens. But if they don't, if we get more of the same in game two, they're fucking in big trouble, man. And especially if the goaltending can't find it, like, I don't know. Like I, I haven't, we're doing this right after game two or sorry, game one. And uh, instead of like waiting, just kind of reaction. So we haven't heard any media, any post game, no, nothing. Right. But can you imagine, can you just imagine Mitch Marner's post game after this one? Listen, let's have a word from Brazzers to pay the bills around here. You okay. want to hear from you want to hear from Brazzers tonight? I, I, I'm gonna run it this time. We're gonna hear from Brazzers, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about that and maybe try and take some positives. Okay. All right, okay. Here we go. This is Brazzers. They pay the bills around here for the tip in. <sighs> Chad, what's the matter? Well, Dale, I guess, I guess I've just been feeling a little down, you know, because like I love podcasting, but I find there's something missing. There's got to be something else that I love other than just podcasting. Chad, wipe those tears away. There's only two things I know how to do. I never get down. I love podcasts just as much as you. The second thing I love is porn, but not just any porn, specifically Brazzers.com. Brazzers.com? That's right, Brazzers.com. What is it? Take a little sneak peek at Brazzers.com. Why don't you bring it up right now? I can't look at this on my computer. Is there any way I could watch it in private on my phone? Absolutely. Privacy settings galore. Brazzers.com 
has all your pornography needs. Well, this is great. I am so much happier now. Brazzers.com. Thanks, Dale. You're welcome, Chad. Brazzers.com. Well, if you have the energy tonight to jerk off, go jerk off to Brazzers.com. But anyway, yeah, a lot of listen. People are gonna need that one. Um, I I'm not watching. Like we're recording this right after the game, so I'm not watching the post game. But while I was watching the game, I was thinking, if I hear one fucking guy talk about learning a lesson from oh tonight, god no no I'm gonna blow my shit no and i know marner's gonna blame the media and he's oh. gonna blame everybody and i don't know what Tavares is gonna say i don't know what keith's gonna say they're gonna sugarcoat it like they always do but if, no no why accountability don't take, no why don't they take it accountability no ownership no accountability they will not own it you i guarantee you like they'll just be like okay like yeah, we I, lost I, game one, but it's a long series. We'll be back in it in game two. Someone is gonna say learn. I guarantee it. It's a it's a hundred percent guarantee. I fucking guarantee it. Someone will say it. And if wouldn't it comes, you love if, if Keith came it, out? If Keith came out and said we were fucking dog shit. He's now. fighting for his life here. So he might as well just lay it all on the line, Sheldon Keith. Like he needs to be as honest as possible. If he wants to, if Keith wants to sugarcoat this, they're done in five games and his and he's fired. He's and he's looking for a job. Yeah. So he might as well go out guns fucking blazing. Like, you can't think that's acceptable. You can't think that's acceptable. Like, you just can't. What? Okay. <laughs> let's say, let's say they had fired Keith earlier in the year and they had a new coach. Yeah. Let's say they had like a proof. Let's say John Cooper was the coach of the league. Oh, just someone God. like that. You wouldn't have that effort. Okay. But what, what do you think you would see different in the team? Like if they change the coach, accountability, with, like accountability, if you, accountability. If you, look at, if you look at Twitter right now, it is fire. Keith is like on fire, dude. If John Cooper was coaching this team, the first thing that would come into play would be accountability. But accountability for what? Unacceptable. A, the, a performance like that is unacceptable. Like, and I don't even for know what John or, I, like for him and the team or just yes, the team. yes. Like he, I think he would make the necessary. It would be very interesting to see John Cooper coach. And well, that's what I'm saying. Like a playoff guy, someone who's won but, two cups. In the I know, but he's also had the big fucking monster 88 back there. I, if he, if his goalie was 35, Sammy. Yeah. He show me just, a good goalie. I'll show you a good coach. Well, that's just it. Like he might like Cooper's had the luxury of like having Vasilevsky the whole fucking time there. Right. So it's a whole different thing, but no, I think Cooper knows the right buttons to push and like what to say and what to do and all that. Keith, it just shows time and time again in the playoffs that he doesn't. He just doesn't. I don't know, man. Like you were talking about positives. I think okay. I yeah, don't have some, if we have well, any I positives. I really don't like take. They took too many penalties. Like I Boston Fucking scored dumb. Boston's dumb. power play was absolutely shit, but they scored two power play goals tonight in game one. Well, the, but, the least penalty kill is dog shit. Yeah, they score. Absolute I think dog shit. I think the Bruins were two for five on the power play, so that's not the best. Clearly, the least. I don't know how many power plays they got, but they didn't get five, and they didn't yeah. score on the power play. Do you know? Do you know how many they got? Like, don't, I don't bring it up, but you just know off the top of your head. How many power plays? Yeah, did the Leafs get tonight? I think they got two. Okay, so they had the four on three to start the second period, and then right. I think uh, Charlie Coyle got called for tripping Matthews, and then they got the over the glass one. Right, right. Delay a game. So they had three. Okay. So oh, goose egg again. So there you go. That's so there's that, that. That's a great start. Not know? only, not only a goose egg, but yeah, they had chances on the four on three. I thought the fucking broadcast was being a little nice to the Leafs being like, Oh, that's exactly what they wanted to do. I'm like, you had four and three and you had three tip in chances. That's it. Like, why wasn't Matthews wiring it on I, four I, on three? I want to get to Nylander being out in a second, but th this just crossed my mind. Did you turn the broadcast on right at eight, or did you have it on like the pregame, watching some of that stuff? I had the pregame on, but I wasn't paying attention. Okay, so it was. I was uh, nervous as fuck. It was approaching eight o'clock, and David Amber did an interview with Sheldon Keith. Oh, I saw that. Um, there was nothing really there, whatever, um, but. Right, I think it was either right before that or right after that. Craig Simpson was doing like a hit with McLean and Bexa and like just the hockey night panel there. And uh 
Craig Simpson was like, he couldn't believe that TJ Brody was not in the lineup to start like game one. He couldn't believe it. He's like, he's like, he's going through numbers. He's like, he's second most ice time on the team. Craig Simpson, he watches this team every fucking game, just like we do. And he's like saying that like he, he was surprised and like couldn't believe that Brody wasn't in the game one lineup. What? Like you think, I that it just threw me for a loop. I'm like, dude, you were a professional fucking hockey player and you watch this team play every night and you thought that he should have been in the game one lineup, like metrics, the numbers, plus minus, all the like get fucking serious. That it just threw me. I yeah, I'll credit Keith on that. I know they lost, but TJ Brody playing the fifth defenseman would not have helped them win this game. If any, if anything, they might have popped Boston might have popped another one back or, or two more in the maybe. Ball. So, anyway. but I mean, let's let's be real here, man. The defense was awful. No, but would Brody have helped? No, Brody wouldn't have helped. Do you, do you see? I don't any, think it would have made do, a difference. Do you see any lineup change? Obviously, if Nylander can go for sure, here, we can. Talk here's what about I him, saw. Here's but... what I saw when I was watching the Leafs defense. I thought Riley played good. Okay, he he played okay, um, but he gonna like going into little, going gonna in, need a little more. You're gonna need a little more. more. But going into the playoffs, I didn't think Riley was that great, and he looked like he's getting it together. Yeah. His partner Labushkin, not great. Well, no, he, um, hasn't, he hasn't been great since he's come over. Edmondson That's the truth. was invisible. Lilligren, bad. Just a, just a guy. Just Benoit, a guy. holy fuck, was he bad? Terrible. Yeah. Like okay. Benoit looked like he looked like a guy who had never really seen this. Kind okay, of but he was still trying to bring a phil, uh, physical element, which Brody would, bring, which Brody yeah. would not do. And he hit a Brody would have Brody would have just been standing there, Chad. I just thought that the Leafs' defense was what's the word where you're just shocked? Okay, like not but, ready. So so do, you, so do you see any changes on the blue line going into game two? And he'll so probably talk, put Brody in. Brody, Giordano, Timmins, like those are the only three bodies. So what do you think? I would and, probably, I would probably take Lilligren out. I might take Benoit out. I don't know. We'll see what Keith does. I, I think Keith looks at uh, Lilligren as like the only other puck mover back there, other yeah. than Riley. So I think that's why he has. I could take or leave uh, Lilligren, but if I wouldn't take him out for Brody, Geo. I want to like okay, if any, Geo, Geo, but I don't know. If, I don't know what Keith is thinking, but I don't know, the man. Playoffs I, are a different thing, like analytics and all that shit it, it, it's based on it's based on like a wide number of games like you can look at Lilligren and be like oh you know he he's a great puck mover and when he's on the ice they have this many percentage chances for and against but you're looking at it at, in a wide you're looking at it like 80 games how it does how does it go in a one playoff game is geo the guy that's just gonna fucking do what it takes to make that play because that's what the playoffs are about. They're not about the analytics. They're not about the puck moving. It's that's what it's about. To, to me, to me, he is that type of guy. That's why maybe he should be in the lineup. I don't know. Like I, I'm grasping at straws here. I'm a fucking pissed off Leafs fan. It's it's 11:30 at night. We're recording this. I'm okay, just... so we've basically said our thoughts here on Game yeah. One. Let, let let's go back to uh, two two quick things. I want I want to finish on the goaltending going into game two Nylander. So obviously they're keeping that What's wrong with Nylander. Yeah. I don't know what, what would anything, have you heard anything other that I, that I haven't heard? Like they're keeping, it I saw a report on, uh, I think Chris Johnson, uh, tweeted it that he woke up, he played, everything was fine. He woke up Thursday morning, tweak something. So it's not an illness. It is an injury of it's some It's an type. injury. He woke up in, I think I don't have the tweet in front of me, but I think it said he woke up in discomfort. And has not felt right since. But no time frame. Because Keith did yeah. say yesterday, be, like their last practice, like before today, that he was he said like him and McMahon were possibilities for yeah. tonight. Obviously, neither one of them played. So it can't be that serious then. If he's I would like, hope Nylander. I, I don't know about McMahon. It sounds like McMahon's serious. I would hope to see Nylander in game two. Yeah. Don't you think? I hope so. After game three on Monday night, or sorry, game two is on Monday night. Game three is on Wednesday night. Then they have the uh, 
Thursday, Friday, two days off before game four next Saturday in Toronto. So there'll be some extra time there for some of these bodies. I imagine Nylander will get back in, and I think McMahon will get back in as well. I think we should go out on the goaltending one more time because I think okay. this is this is just such a – okay, it, as much as the big boys not showing up and the lack of offense, that is a top, top concern. I think the goaltending is equally as big of a concern – what do you do here, Chad? If you're, we kind of touch on this off the top. What do you do? Game two, back to Samson off for one more game to see if he can find it, and then it's if not, it's Wall, or you just go to Wall right now. What goaltending? Where are you at with that? What would you do going forward, game two? Well, I would go to Wall because I thought he would start Wall in the third period. I thought so too. He didn't. He went back to Samson off. Knowing Keith, he's probably going to go to Samson off because for some reason. He just and I get it. I, I kind of get it. Like if Samsonov gets hot, he's probably the better goalie. But let's face uh-huh. it. Let's face it. This has been Samsonov's season. Complete dog shit. Great for 20 games. Complete dog shit. But he seems in a dip at the wrong time. Exactly. He's in the complete dog shit stage right now. So do you keep gambling on that that he's gonna get hot? Or do you play Wall, who was really good, got injured, came back? wasn't great but didn't really get a lot of playing time and do you kind of fucking throw him in there and be like all right you're getting all the playing time okay know. so so but it's the leafs fault man it's fucking tree living's fault no no of course like, think, you, thinking that samson off could take you to where you want to go exactly like you you could have got a goaltender at the trade deadline but you maybe done something but you were like oh we're gonna go with this guy in a one-year contract and this rookie who's only played 30 games in the nhl but this maybe, is gonna be our tandem going in but maybe he never thought that maybe he thought wall is actually going to be the guy, but yet he just hasn't been able to find it since he returned. Well then throw him in. Cause can it can be any worse than a five, one loss? No, no, I agree. Okay. So you just, you would go, I'm going wall 100%. Wall? For okay. Game two. I think I would do the same thing, but like you said, I kind of think Keith will go back to Sammy in game two. I think he will. I just think watch, he will. Watch the game tape. No, I, I'm just saying. Samsonov looked like I, I'm, shit. I'm not saying that's what I would I, do. I know, I know. I, Sorry, I, I'm I, fucking fired up. Tonight. No, no, I know, oh, man. But I think it's like, this is this is it, Sammy. Like, you find it here on Monday night, yeah. or Wall starts game three at home without a fucking doubt. If we have a, a similar performance like this tonight from Samsonov, if he is in net on Monday night for game two, that's it. Like that's it. Like we don't see him again unless Wall comes in. And then if Wall you, comes in, if and you struggles. do that, if you gamble that and you lose, you're down to nothing in the series. Yeah. And you've got to win, like you say, four out of five against a team who's completely fucking dominated you all season. Yeah. Probably. If not, I'm a betting man, gonna I'm gonna gamble on Wall gives me a solid enough start to win. Okay. Like okay. Let, let's face it. If Wall makes, if Wall's a net tonight and he stops that two on one. And you get out of that the chaos of the first ten minutes, nothing, nothing. Maybe we have a different game. No, I'm I'm for it, man. Like, dude, all all you got to do, he all Wall has to do is not let in that first shot, and and we got a game. So like, I, I'm for it. Like, I want to see Joe. And I said going in, I'm like, look, man, I think there's a real strong possibility we're going to see both goalies, and I am sticking to that. I think we yeah, you whether right. it's whether it's game two or not, we're going to see Joseph Wall. I just well, have a feeling it's going to happen. Do you think Boston will do? Uh, because they were like, we're going to rotate. I don't know why you would. Not why after the tonight. fuck would you not play Swayman again after no, tonight? No, it doesn't make any sense. doesn't make any if sense. If they play Allmark, they are handing the Leafs a present. Well, they're both equally as good. So I know, I but after the way that, Swayman but... played, if, you're, if I'm Swayman and I play like that and I don't get in for game two, like you're just fucking with the mentality. Like if they play Allmark, you're handing the Leafs a gift. Take that gift and run with it. They won't, though. They'll play yeah. Swayman again. I don't know how much of a gift that is, but yeah, I guess you're right. You I know what I mean? Right. Just yeah. when a guy plays that good, he was yeah. phenomenal tonight. He, has, he hasn't lost to them all season. His fifth no. straight win against them, going back to the regular season. So it's going to be wild, game two. But anyway, let's leave it there. We'll be back after right. uh, after game two. We'll Monday. be back after game two. Hopefully it's better. And oh, man. I apologize to everyone. I was kind of a loud mouth tonight, so I apologize no, dude. that. I'm fired up. And Chad, how much... How, Think about Leafs Nation right now that just watched what we all watched. Everyone's thinking, really, guys? Again, everyone's thinking the same thing, Chad. Yeah, yeah, like, that's true. It's, come on, dude. Like, it's, it's nothing to apologize about. Like, it is. You got to call it what it is. Not good enough. Not good enough. Not the best. 
Not the best. But listen, everybody, for the Tip In Maple Leafs podcast, follow us on social media at the Tip In Maple Leafs podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Tip In Podcast on TikTok. Tip In Pod on Twitter. Email us, tippinpodcast at gmail.com. Send us messages on social media. Comment on the YouTube page. Let it out. Let your fucking anger out in the comments section. Call the players whatever you want to call them because we don't give a shit. And, and, then, go, until, and, then, and oh, then go to browsers after that and let a little more out. I did read this week in, uh, I think it was the New York Times. Or no, it wasn't the New York Times. It was something New York. Maybe the New Yorker. Just someone sent me a thing that said, and Dale, you may uh, like this. If you masturbate once a day, you can add seven years to your life. Perfect. You're, you're going to live forever. Well, <laughs> that probably, like, hopefully that counter uh, acts. It can, they said it. Oh, well, sorry. I was say, I always get, like, hopefully that counteracts with my uh, drinking and smoking <laughs> over the years. So that's already taken <laughs> several years off my life. So maybe my masturbating, jerking off every day uh, to browsers will like, maybe they just wash themselves out, but we'll see. It said it can relieve wash stress. Together. It can relieve stress, help you sleep. And also it, it like significantly by a high percentage reduces testicular cancer in men. Oh, okay, well, that's perfect, man. Because I might already be cooked with all my drinking and smoking. So there you go. You're just good to know. you're just evening out. Good to know. Good just to know. evening good out. Know. Anyway, uh, until after game two, hopefully we tie the series up at one. Let's go, boys. Let's get this fucking shit together. I'm Chad. I'm Dale, and we will. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for listening on the audio podcast. Thanks for watching on YouTube. Please like this video on YouTube, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Oh, boy. We'll be back. Game two, Monday. Go, Leafs, go. Not unnecessary for sure must win, but it feels pretty fucking close. Man, that should be interesting on Monday night to see Let's what beat happens. the Bruins at least once this year. Who, who, yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Who's playing that? Who are, will the big boys show up? We'll, we'll be back to break it all down. Go, Leafs, go. We'll catch you guys later.